on your homework goal setting sheet, you should have from Friday, and sorry, I erased yours, so I'll erase it and change it back to what you guys have. From Friday, you should have had a 3.2.1. You should have had points that you gave yourself the same number written here, and then an average. Today, for 3.2.2, and again, your answers don't matter. So you can go ahead and give yourself a zero, one, or a two right now. You're putting your score. You're adding it with the previous score. You're doing the division. And if I still have a four out of four, I still have 100%. If I goofed up and forgot to finish it or forgot it was going to be due today or gave up on some problems, I might not still have 100%. We're going to check your homework before we come talk about special instructions. So keep 323 three out. I'm going to end up passing out 324 and 325 today just so we have them. But first, let's check 323, three, and I'm coming around to write down what you gave yourself. Oh, you said 323. Sorry, 322. Two. Oh, my bad. I, look, man, there are so many numbers in my head. I say the wrong thing. I got to like, process through them in a way that makes sense to me. So you will see 323 on your desk with a number written on it. So write a number on there forever. Two and one is And if you have a zero or a one, you should be using this time to work on your homework. Obviously, you're not copying answers, but you should be using this time to work on it. Hey, so I'm still trying to figure out if I'm actually collecting your work or not. Especially if you got a zero or one, I don't want it. Because you should keep it and keep working on it. Try to get it done and correct so that you know, you know what you're doing and you have it in your binder for the next thing. So I don't really actually care at all if you turn in any homework today. I might start to collect in batches. So like everything we've checked for the week, go ahead and turn it in on Friday sort of thing. So let's all quit speculating what needs put in the bin. What needs done is you need to do your homework. That's like step one. Guys, I should not be asking 22 times what number are you giving yourself that goes on the effort line everybody right now on three two two write a number on the effort line a zero a one or a two i know this is a new habit we're getting into but it's not complicated if it's completely done all of your effort it's a two if it's somewhere between halfway and totally done, it's a one. If it's not even halfway done, it's a zero. And you keep that out because I'm coming around to look at it. And then make sure that you've got that number also on your goal setting form. starting off this chapter with two numbers that are less than twos, it should be an indicator that we might need to change a habit. So if you've got a one on both of these, what can you change? Like, can you on the bus, on the way to school, ask yourself, did I do my homework? And then will you have it with you? If you don't have it done, will you have it with you to do it? Because if you don't have it with you, that's going to be tough. Can I scroll down? Checking further on the assignment. Guys, this is your chance. If you didn't get it all done, you should be working on it now. Oh, 
what do you think? So what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? Is it the table or is it the table? Does your table line up with these numbers? Look at 84 then to really be able to answer your question. Because I need to see how particular the question is. That's one MCA. That's not the binder that I want. All right. So Caden's asking about 84. Um. See, so yeah, there's really only one way to see this pattern changing, which is adding two each time. And if we dropped down to figure zero, it would have two tiles. So I think this is the table that we need. It's okay if you got it wrong, like that's totally fine. But like it is adding two every time. So if I write out the amount of tiles, so I think that's what it's gonna need to So I got a few more people that I need to get around to. Yeah, all numbers is another way to say like any real number. Guys, if a problem like hides from your eyes, that doesn't mean you gave up. If if you like just look at a problem and you're like, I don't know how to do this, screw it, I'm done. That's giving up. Like if you don't go use your math notes and the answer can be found in your math notes, like that's kind of giving up. Caden? Uh, I just wanted to see if uh, my answer was correct. It's like the same answer. For which? Tell me problem first. 386. 86, okay. I wrote a different number. Is, is that like a number times pi? So if you use pi terms, quote unquote pi terms, your answer could have been 15 pi or 7.5 pi squared for circumference and area respectively. But really, unless we get told to leave your answer in terms of pi, we normally switch it out of terms of pi. So it should really be 47.1 and 176.6. Yeah, Lucy? So guys, your circle formulas that were necessary for that homework are right here in your math notes. Not much effort at all. I go look at unit two math notes. I flip the page once. Here is my circumference formula. Here is my area formula. If you gave up on problem 86, like you gave up, put in more effort. Eighty seven A. It should be infinitely many solutions because, yeah, three X minus two X is just one X. 
negative 7 plus 9 is positive 2. Since they're identical, it's infinitely many, or A, R, N. Right, so that would be A, R, N. Yes? Eighty-seven D, like dog. Yeah. So there are other ways that we could do this. Um, somebody came and asked me about this problem, and they said, "Well, could I start by doubling everything? Or are we allowed to double everything as long as we double everything?" Yeah, you could. So you, there are many ways that we could start this problem. So if we took that way, because actually, uh, that person, I was like, "Oh my god, that's brilliant!" Like I don't like negative numbers, but I also don't like partial numbers. If we doubled everything, we'd have p equals 2p plus 10, and we could solve it out that way. But so the route that I took in my answer key was I subtracted p from both sides and got negative 0.5p or negative half p. Then I, then I actually multiplied by negative 2. And the reason I did this is I knew because I've been at this for a while, that to go from negative one half to positive one, I could multiply by negative two. That doesn't mean that's the route that you need to take, but I knew that it would work for me. So there are multiple ways to get to our answer here, but we should get to that P is negative 10. Yes. So negative 1m plus 9 came from negative 2m plus a positive m, right? That's a 1m. Oh. 8 and 1 is a positive 9, right? Small mistakes can really get us. Other questions or answers that you need to see again? Isaac, we good or no? Like, so I just can't tell if we need to, do we need to check anything else? 83, 84. I mean, 83 was not on the homework. Remember, 83 is in the examples from class section. Oh, 384. Sorry, I thought you said 83, 84. So 84, yeah, you need your figure zero. That is only two tiles. Your figure four, that is a five by... Kind of five by an extra five or five by a total of six, right? It depends on how you count the bottom. But be careful, we don't count this square twice. I think that's what some people were trying to do is count the bottom square twice. Careful, like it's either four plus six or five plus five, or like you can look at it different ways. Yeah, but our, our figure four is going to have ten tiles. All right, any other questions, Ren? Ah, uh, well, that for sure probably goofed you up at first. But then what we're looking at here is what change is occurring. And guys, this, guys, if you're glazed over right now, come back to us. This is leading us to our very important study of slope intercept form, which always looks like y equals mx plus b. So if any siblings have brought this up with you, they're like, a little ahead of where we're going. Now, we're going to get there very soon. And that's actually what this rule is. Our B is negative 1 and our M is 2. But here's what it's really asking us. Is when X is 0. When X is 0, when X does not matter. What is the Y value? Well, it's at negative 1. Right? So when X is 0, Y is negative 1. And we can put that in our table. When x is negative 1, y is negative 3. Like, we can fill in this table. The multiplier, the coefficient of your x is the amount that we're changing by. We're always adding 2. So every x gives us another 2. 
Every time x goes up, we get two more. x goes up, we get two more. So that's how we get to here. Does that make a little bit of sense now? It's okay if it doesn't make total sense. It's fine. That's why we still got learning to do. So Noah, explain why you are more confused now. Because I think you're just trying to be funny, but if you're being serious, I want to help you. What do you mean? Say more. So what about the negative 1 doesn't make sense, or does that make sense? At that point, is that a y value of negative 1? What do you mean kind of? Can't say kind of, like that's mathy. Does it make sense or not? Okay, what about it? Let's go to our math notes. If we look at no, you're not. Get that word out of here. That's even worse than the E word. If we look at our notes, a Y intercept is always where the line or the points cross the Y axis. Sam? That's today. But that doesn't matter for this class. That will matter for your next class. So if you're eligible and you're on the team and you're competing in it today, that's about you. But off-topic question, inappropriate time to ask that. So, the y-intercept on the table is where x equals 0, y equals a number. This number will actually be part of our rule. If you want to pull out your math notes, you could give yourself some really good highlighting here and say this 0, 4, this y-intercept point, where we cross the axis, ends up being our constant. You should write this down. This will eventually get called our B. So I highlighted in the table the 0, 4 on the graph where it hits and in the rule, it is the number that cannot change. It is the constant. Unit 2 math notes. They should be in plastic sleeves. You should have to pull it out to highlight it. So then, the change that is happening. The change that is happening. As x is increasing by 1, which is always the way that we want to set up our tables, what is happening to y, Noah? So every time we go and x, every x takes our y down 2. And that we will actually start to formalize as our slope triangle. Which literally creates the stair steps of our graph if we just go down over, down, or really up or down, left or right. Up or down, left. Or, so here we're going down, over, down, over, down, over. Now this is deeper than I needed to teach today, but that's fine. Where do we really get that negative 2 from? That is what we call our slope. And it is the change in y over the change in x, which the change in the y value went down 2. What did the x value do? Go up 1. This means delta. This is a science abbreviation and math. It means change. So this triangle, and I thought you guys had used it in science already at this point, but a triangle in front of something means change in. Violet? Why 
Whoa! Oh, she's boarding somebody. She's boarding somebody. Oh. And then I, I, I did it before my brother, and I just remember that. I was so proud of myself, and I keep, I keep dreaming about it. So you're going to bring it up again and be like, hey, now I'm finally doing this math? Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. So, everyone has 323 three on their desk. Wait, yeah, but I didn't check um, 88. I was part of it. All right, finish checking 88 real quick. Noah, you do not need to have that, like, mastered at this point. It is fine if it's still, like, I really still don't understand what's going on. That's fine. I just like to give you little okay. snippets here and there, and like eventually it'll all come together and you'll be like, oh, it makes sense. At least that's my goal. If you choose to not pay attention while I am going over the special instructions for homework, your special instructions for the homework will just be do all of it. The special instructions are to not do all of it. But I'm going over this once. We clear? So if you are one of the people that likes to half listen, that's going to be on you. Right? That's going to be a you issue. For 323, on 323, because you should have it in front of you, I walked around and passed that up to each of you. My advice would be just go through your paper and literally next to the problem so you don't forget about it. Write it right next to the problem. Now, these are minimums, right? So if you choose to do three or four of these, because there are four to choose from, good, great, awesome, extra practice is always good. So if you with me, I feel like we're spending too long picking colors or something back there that you're going you're gonna to ask me to slow down, and all I want to do is speed up. So 94 is pick two. 95 is pick two. If it just says do, it means do like normal. An asterisk next to 98. Because I meant to put an asterisk next to like all of them, but especially on 98, you will notice that three of them are division and one is multiplication. The multiplication doesn't count. You can do that one, but you got to pick two of the division ones. Well... Uh, because the multiplication, I'll give you all the answer right now. It's negative 50 over, uh, what's 13 times 11? 130, 143. There you go, I did one for you. Because multiplying fractions, he's going to say it, is easy. <laughs> Multiply, guys, multiplying fractions is probably the easiest thing I ask you to do this year. Because mastering multiplying fractions, you should already be there. Because it's multiplying integers. You've already learned multiplication. Multiplying fractions is straight through the top, straight through the bottom. That's it. All we're doing is multiplying. Now, then if you decide to reduce, then it might actually become a thing. But multiplying fractions is not a skill you need to practice. So do A, C, or D, pick two of those. Bryson. Uh, are you saying you were right point just so I'd see it? Well, because I wanted to get the reaction out of you guys. Because sometimes I just want the reaction. Yes. Hey, while I'm passing out the next set of papers, you could like do one of those problems from three, two, three. Like you, you oh, yeah, could use your brain of time right now and like work on something. I don't know how. Wait, oh, keep doing it. Yes. The time you spend trying to decide which ones are easier, you might as well just pick it randomly and go. It will take you longer to try to figure out which problems are easier. That's always fine. What do you mean? What is it? For like the answer that I wrote down? Yeah. Because 
Ah, that's a great question. Hey, so Isaac pushed back against like, wait, why is this negative? Guys, I will tell you the only tricky part about B, and I should have recognized this, is the negative out front is a poor way to write this. Put the negative in the numerator or in the denominator, but out front is a bad way to write this because it's like in line with the other line. So how I would write this is negative 10 over 13 times 5 over 11. There's only a single negative, so our answer stayed negative. Does that make sense, Isaac? Yeah, yeah that's, it's just a poor way to represent it. What? Same with C, there's only one negative, it would stay negative. I would put it in top or bottom. It doesn't matter where, I would just put it somewhere else. All right, in three, two, four. Again, I'm only doing this once, so stop working on three, two, three, and let's look at three, two, four. And 102, A, B, or C, D. We're grouping them together. A, B, or C, D. You guys, make sure you put your names on these. Some of you are going to do all of this in a week. Like, because then you're done with homework for like the next couple of days. Oh, I'm actually probably going to do it during foundation. This is in math. Remember, math is not the same. And then, I mean, we will be doing the 323 three today, but 324, you can clip in your binder once you have the special instructions down. Because I needed to, like, because your homework for the next two days, the next two days, yeah, this is for today and tomorrow. These three assignments, oh my gosh. Uh, no, hang on for now. I'm gonna, I need to make the announcement the whole group to make sure that it won't hurt me. But, I'm like, because this is new, aha, success, because this is a new strategy for me, I'm still trying to figure out, like, am I gonna collect these? Yeah, and I, like, we might get to that point, but especially with special instructions, I wanted to, like, give you guys all those instructions. And three, two, five. And for three, two, five. Scooby dooby doo. Oh, now I could go for Scooby snacks. Now I have the theme song stuck in my head. It's all right. We got a. Uh, I forget. Now I can't remember the title, but we got um. Oh, uh, uh, I can show you the. Whatever that song is. We got that stuck in our head this morning. So you're welcome. Now it's stuck in your head, too. Except, well, except I started changing all the lyrics because, like, none of the lyrics were in my head. So I was like, I can show you the map. Distributive of property. All right. So, three, two, three. The hyphen. For the, uh, the and this. I do not understand what you're asking about. Oh, the asterisks. Probably just because I was trying to put asterisks next to them and say that's a minimum. So, yeah, these are not actually anything special aside from it's the minimum. This was the only, like, special special of, like, you know, whatever. And this one, I, you know, I just wrote do A, B, or C, D, or do all four of them. I don't care. But you got to do two minimum A, B, or C, D. You can't do A and C. They're very similar. Val. Oh, why is there only one do with an asterisk next to it? I know. That's what we were just talking about. Literally. Because I'm a goofball and I don't make very good notes. So. Moving on, away from my mistakes. So, 
Penelope wants to know, if we kept this pattern going, um, which guys, actually, I had to do something really similar to, the, uh, to this. I got hired to make Otterbein, uh, which is the college I went to, some cornhole boards, and they wanted, like, block OC on it. And, like, they gave me what they wanted, but it wasn't the size they wanted. It's like, this is real stuff that you end up doing, especially if you're into art or graphic design or anything like that. So, uh, this is on your paper, right? So, guys, we are looking at 323. So, 323 should be out on your desk. Let's go ahead and put away 324, 325. Please slide them under. Right? Please slide them under. They tell us the rule for this pattern. Let's go ahead and highlight this is 6x plus 3, which tells us two things. And anyone remind me what two things that tells us? Like, what's the 3, what's the 6, Mel? 3 is the constant, and the 6 is the variable? But what is, so the 6 is the coefficient, but what is, so you said the constant first. What does the constant tell us? Uh, there's the guarantee of at least 3 for every. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things it tells us. You're right. There's something else that's, like, better. Or, like, more important, I feel like. So? X the slope. What do you mean, X is the slope? Uh, the one with the constant. You're talking about X, or are you talking about 6? 6 and So 6 is your slope, quote-unquote. But we don't really know what slope means yet. So quick trying to use words that we just learned today. Can you can you relate it in a different way of what six might be? Take a moment with your teammates. You're right, but like what it means, we still have to talk about. How many tiles do you think will be in figure 50? Chat, your teammates write something down on your paper. How many tiles do you think will be in figure 50? Uh, My advice would be to write this on graph paper, because I know some of you haven't written anything down yet. My advice would be write this on graph. I know it's on your paper, but there's not much space. My advice would be write this on graph paper. Guys, X and Y are made up things. They don't exist. Well, they do if we say they do. Plus, there be alphabet. We, we are going to agree that they do, depending on the situation. If I could have your attention back up here, I have a feeling that I maybe know more than you do. Unless, Bryson, do you want to continue? In the three minutes that we have left, do you actually think, like, or should I just probably win? Okay. But another day, maybe? Yeah, I have the. Okay, love it. So, guys, these situations are just trying to give some kind of visual to what we're talking about. These tiles are just anything, right? They could be like Hershey Kisses or whatever. Like, doesn't matter what they are. We're just relating, as Violet was talking about, an input and an output. And we haven't really formalized that vocab yet. What we've talked about a tiny bit is like X and Y. Go and write down, like start a table. Figure number is our X. Tiles is our Y only because we made it that way. Like we chose this. 
You could flip them around. It wouldn't be very nice. It would actually look more complicated. But you could write this in a completely other way, like switching which is x and which is y. You could use a and b instead. Except when we go to graph, we've agreed that we have the x-axis and the y-axis. Sam? Can you what? Well, you tell me. Can I? You can't. Well, like, am I allowed, right? Can I replace a variable with a number? Yes, we're allowed to do that. So at figure zero. Guys, this, this is your y-intercept. Your y-intercept is always at x equals zero. Your y-intercept. Now, sometimes your y-intercept might be zero also. Like the amount of money I'll get paid if I work zero hours. So if we take a quiz, if we take a quiz right now on this, you know what you're doing? You, you do. Okay, so for like if we make x 50, how do we do that? Well, because if the figure number is 50 and x equals the figure number, then it'd be 6 times 50. Just 6 times 50? Plus 3. And then we would still have to add the 3. So if our figure number, so we already know a few of these. A few of these were given to us. How many tiles in figure one? Nine. Did this go up by six? Yes. So this is always telling us our increase. But guys, I can't just keep doing plus six. Because do you think Bryson did plus six 49 more times? No. no. What he said he did, say it again. Uh, plus three. Well, say again the whole thing that you did. Because oh. you're right, and you proved me wrong, and it's fine. I don't care if you were on Tic Tac Toe. Plus three. So we do six, we plug in, or the math word is substitute. So we say, okay, if x is 50, we can plug it in. Please make sure you don't forget the plus three, because that's the trap door people fall into. And what's this equal? I can't math, apparently. 300 what? Ah, 300 degrees. Questions. Questions on that process. Yeah, no, my brain only went halfway there. Um, the next problem on your paper. I want you guys to take the next, like, two minutes, try to work through these. We're going to start with this as our warm-up tomorrow because, obviously, I did not make it very far into my lesson. So, like, if you're singing or humming or otherwise making noise, please stop. Take the last minute and a half, try to do some work on these so we can start with these tomorrow. If you need to do it on graph paper, great, because you should have graph paper on your table. Both A and B, well, kind of and and C and and D. All so all of them. <laughs> so all of them have these partial x values. I'm wondering if there's something that we could do, like to both sides, to wipe out partial x values. And like, I, I don't want an answer today because we're out of time and I don't, I don't think you guys want me to keep you late, but think to yourself and maybe try these out of what could we do to both sides to make them like way easier to begin with. Have a wonderful day. Well, so the, the idea is to figure out what the direct route is 
and then seeing it because your choice or not. Right? But we need to determine what is the direct route.